Following the success of the Mosquito, de Havilland set off from providing the Royal Air Force with a long-range, high-performance fighter. From this, the twin-engine de Havilland Hornet and Sea Hornet was born, an aircraft that test pilot Eric Brand believed could, quote, even with one propeller feathered, loop with the best single-engine fighter, end quote. This is the story of one of Britain's best but overlooked piston engine aircraft. Make sure to go leave a like and subscribe for future videos. The de Havilland Hornet began as a private venture by de Havilland in November 1942. After the unsuccessful DH-101 and DH-102 night bomber projects, de Havilland began turning their attention to fulfilling the need for a long-range fighter specifically for the Pacific War. While the DH-103 Hornet was a completely new design, it was inspired by the de Havilland Mosquito Bomber and the DH-103 utilised the same plywood balsa plywood technique for the wooden fuselage as had the Mosquito. To achieve the necessary high performance and long range, the DH-103 was extensively streamlined. From the beginning, Rolls-Royce was involved, developing special Merlin engines, Merlin 130 and 131, with a reduced frontal area that decreased drag and thus increased performance. By January 1943, the Ministry of Aircraft Production had seen a completed mock-up of the Hornet, but it wouldn't be until June 1943 that de Havilland received permission to begin building. Specification F-1243 was written up around the DH-103 project. When the prototype rolled off the production line for engine runs on July 20th, 1944, it was the first aircraft in which the wings used a technique where wood was cemented to the metal using redux adhesive. The design also featured contra-rotating propellers and 2,070 horsepower engines. On July 28, 1944, only 13 months since the official commencement of the detailed design, the de Havilland DH-103 Hornet took to the air for the first time with Geoffrey de Havilland Jr. at the controls. Extensive trials of the aircraft revealed that the Hornet could achieve an incredible top speed of 485 miles per hour at 22,000 feet. The second prototype followed with provisions for two 200-gallon drop tanks and the ability to carry two 1,000 pound bombs under the wings. By the end of 1944, an order for 60 Hornet F Mark I's had been submitted. The first DH 103 Hornet F Mark I was delivered to the Royal Air Force on the 28th of February 1945, arriving at the Armament Experimental Establishment Boscombe Down. The Second World War would end before the Hornet could see service and the 1st Squadron, No. 64 Squadron, was formed at RAF Horsham St. Faith in May 1946. This was followed by Numbers 41 and 65 Squadrons, and eventually 7 Squadrons would be equipped with Hornets. Hornet Squadrons were tasked with defending the UK airspace until it was replaced in this role by the Meteor 8s in 1951, and from 1949 switched to Interceptor and Intruder duties. The Hornet PR2 was a photo reconnaissance version, however only five were ever built before the decision was made to cancel it. The Hornet F Mark III was an improved fighter version of the F Mark I, with an increase of 20% in range. It also featured the provision to carry two 200 gallon drop tanks or 2,000 pound bombs, or eight rockets. The F Mark III was revealed in June 1946 and would remain in production until June 1952 with a total of 132 being built. The majority of the RAS Hornet fleet joined the Far East Air Force, where it saw action as a ground attack aircraft in the Malayan Emergency in 1951. Equipped with rockets and bombs, the Hornet was utilised to support the ground forces, where it proved to be very effective against enemy forces hiding in the jungle. Number 45 Squadron, based in Singapore and equipped with Hornets, undertook 4,500 airstrikes against enemy targets, the most undertaken by a single squadron in the Far East Air Force. However, the RAF was forced to withdraw the Hornet early from the Far East due to the high heat and humidity of the tropics, causing the glue that bonded the plywood skin susceptible to breaking down, thus resulting in delamination problems. The Hornet was pulled from RAF service in 1955 
being replaced by vampires, with the last operational sortie by RAF Hornets undertaken on May 21, 1955. Remaining airframes were scrapped. Throughout its career, the Hornet would also set a series of point-to-point -point speed records and see mixed success as a racing aircraft. In September 1949, a Hornet would average a speed of 435.823 miles per hour, flying from England to Gibraltar. A Hornet F Mark I, flown by Geoffrey Pike, placed third in the Limp High Speed Handicap Race on 31st of August 1946. Another Hornet F Mark I flew in the National Air Races at Aldham on 30th of July 1949, as well as the Kemsley Challenge Trophy Race where it failed to place. The same Hornet with Geoffrey Pike at the controls placed second in the Air League Challenge Cup. From the beginning of the Hornet design, planning of a navalized version of the Hornet was conducted. When in 1944 specification N544 was issued, de Havilland submitted three early production F Mark I models. These three F Mark I's would act as a prototype for what would become known as the Sea Hornet. Sea Hornets differed from normal Hornets by having folding wings, arrestor hooks, specialized naval radar and radio equipment, and tail down catapult pickup points. The first prototype took to the air on the 19th of April 1945, and by the third prototype had commenced carrier trials on the 19th of August aboard the light fleet carrier HMS Ocean. When the Royal Navy placed orders for the Sea Hornet F Mark 20, the Sea Hornet became the Navy's first twin-engine long-range escort fighter. The first production Sea Hornet was delivered to Number 703 Squadron at Royal Naval Air Station Lee on Salon for service trials in October 1946. The first Fleet Air Arm Squadron equipped with Sea Hornets was Number 801 at Ford. In 1949, after extended trials, No. 801 Squadron went to sea aboard HMS Implacable. 79 Sea Hornet F Mark 20s were delivered. The Sea Hornet would be developed into a two-seater night fighter known as the NF Mark 21. Developed for the Royal Navy, they featured a red dome in the nose and housed an observer in the back. Sea Hornet NF Mark 21s were considerably slower than the single-seater Sea Hornet versions. The first deck trials of the NF-21 were conducted during October 1948 on board HMS Illustrious and after extensive trials entered service with No. 809 Squadron in early 1949. No. 809 Squadron would be the only squadron to fly the Sea Hornet NF Mark 21 and 72 of this variant were produced. The final variant of the Sea Hornet was an unarmed photo reconnaissance version, the Sea Hornet PR-22. Only 23 versions of this variant were built. The Sea Hornet saw little frontline service with the Royal Navy. Although being a superb fighter, it was unsuitable for the light fleet carriers. It did operate from land bases within England, as well as at Halfar Malta. Sea Hornets were utilised in secondary roles such as training. However, by early 1950s, the Royal Navy had withdrawn the vast majority of their Sea Hornets from service and put them in long-term storage in Scotland. By 1957, most of these had found their way to the scrapyards. One example of the Sea Hornet made its way to Canada and Australia for testing. The Canadian Sea Hornet did make its way into civilian hands in 1950. Currently, there are no surviving Hornets or Sea Hornets, although there is a Sea Hornet under restoration to flying condition in New Zealand. The de Havilland Hornet was an exceptional fighter and a fine example of the pinnacle of piston engine technology. Famed aircraft test pilot Eric Brand commented, quote, In my book, the Sea Hornet ranks second to none for harmony of control, performance characteristics, and perhaps most important, in inspiring confidence in its pilots. For sheer exhilarating flying enjoyment, no aircraft has ever made a deeper impression on me. End quote. In total, 209 Hornets and 178 Sea Hornets were produced. This video is proudly sponsored by the official Tomato Wine store. Go fly over there by clicking the link in the description below to find some really awesome aviation products. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure to go leave a like and subscribe for future videos. In the meantime, keep flying high.